Welcome to another video lesson on the Structures and Forces Unit for Grade 7 Science. Today we're going to take a look at the internal forces acting on a structure and how they affect those structures. Probably one of the more important lessons of this unit. So the outcomes we're going to cover today, SLO 2.1, recognize and use units of force and units of mass and identify and measure forces and loads. SLO 2.3, identify tension, compression, shearing, and bending forces within a structure and describe how these forces can cause a structure to ultimately fail. And lastly, analyze a design and identify properties of materials that are important to individual parts of that structure. So let's start with a quick review. Solid, frame, or shell structure? Frame structure. Solid, frame, or shell structure? Solid. Solid, frame, or shell structure? Shell. Solid, frame, or shell? Frame. Very good. Solid, frame, or shell structure? Yeah, it's a frame structure. Very unusual frame structure and actually our structure of the day. This building is located on the other side of the world, about 16 hours away by flight. It is the CCTV Tower in Beijing. Now these headquarters, approximately 234 meters tall, is a 44-story skyscraper in Beijing Central Business District. It serves as a headquarters for the China Central Television, kind of like the CBC in Canada. The building's facade or outside was completed in 2008. Now, the construction of this building is considered to be a challenge. That is because Beijing resides in a seismic zone. What is a seismic zone? It is a zone where there are earthquakes. That means that this building has to be nearly earthquake proof. Now, a little bit of a funny story here. Because of its radical shape, it is said that a taxi driver first came up with its nickname, which roughly translates as Big Boxer Shorts. So, where is this building? Let's take a look. There's our school. We're going to fly west this time, all the way to Beijing. And right there. Kind of get that funny shape right from the 3D building. Amazing. So here's the building in 2007 of October. You can clearly see the frame structure there. Now, let's take an example for eggs. If we're talking about internal forces, this is a great example of forces acting on a structure. So, uh, anybody ever try to step on an egg? Eggs. You gotta love eggs. They taste great. They're good for you. High in something. But what's really cool about eggs is their shape. Check that out. It's awesome. Simple, but it's awesome. You know, we can do something really good with all these eggs. Wow. Let's have egg extravaganza. few more. So when you're ready, you'll take your first bite or right step up there and give me your arm. I will support your arm and don't be afraid to lean on me. If you don't lean on me a little bit, then you may start crushing with your walk. Okay. We want to try and keep as many as possible. Okay? Alright, when you're ready. Slowly. If you try and step on an egg, uh, it can withstand incredible force. Even if you try and put the egg in your hand, uh, it can withstand force when you hold it a very certain way and you're crushing it from top to bottom, so to speak. It's originally made that way so it could fall from the chicken after it was laid and it wouldn't destroy the contents. Now, the egg resists a force, and that force can increase or decrease. And it depends on three things. It depends on magnitude, direction, and location. 
So what is magnitude, direction, and location? Well, magnitude is how much force is being applied. Direction is in which way the force is going to be applied. And location, where the force is applied. Let's take, for example, swinging an ax. Okay. If we think of magnitude, magnitude is how hard you're going to swing that ax to hit that or crack that log. Direction is the direction you swing the ax, so that is in a downward motion towards the log, okay, or towards whatever you're cutting. And location is the exact point or the exact spot that you want to hit. So all three of those acting together will help you use the ax effectively to split the log. Now, back to the egg. The egg's overall shape helps us to resist forces, both outside and inside. Now we're going to talk about the internal forces acting on structures. Those five forces we're going to look at is compression, tension, bending, torsion, and shear. Okay, Let's start with the first one being compression. So take a look at this arch, this beautiful naturally made arch. Where do you believe, which point do you believe there is compression? Well, compression would occur at the top of the arch. It's the force that exists when there's a type of squeezing at the same force pushing on the st structure internally. So compression is a force that acts to squeeze an object or push parts within an object together. Now, we figured out real quick when we're building buildings that compression can be used as our friend. So we take a look at this little structure here. This is called a buttress. And a buttress is essentially a little supporter that allows for a wall or structure to resist internal resistance. Some walls don't stand enough on their own without some outside help. This long brick wall would collapse inside or out if it didn't have something to help it stand up. You add a roof and there's all this pressure pushing down on the wall wanting it to collapse out. So we add these little buttresses or supports on the outside to hold it up. Here's another example of some buttresses. This whole dam or causeway is pushing back against the wall because the water pushing on one side wants to cause the wall to collapse the other way. Okay? Some of the more famous structures of the world use something called flying buttresses. And a flying buttress still allows for support, but they fly out from or away from the building for greater support to support things like domes and heavier walls. Do you know where this structure is? This structure is in Paris, and it is Notre Dame Cathedral. Very famous structure, and you can see here that there are flying buttresses. They fly outwards from the building and hold the dome up from collapse. Next force is a tension force. And a tension force acts to stretch and pull something apart. Take a look at these guitar strings. They are pulling apart, and tension allows you to play the guitar and get the notes you're supposed to get. Where in this photo would you expect there to be tension? Well, we can see that there's tension in this spot here and in this spot here because they're, the guide wires or ropes are pulling uh, downwards or outwards to hold the bridge deck in place. Okay, so we're here in Rosedale, Alberta, I think it is, on the Rosedale Suspension Bridge. Now, if you take a look on these large guide wires all the way up, okay, each one has this cable here, and it's holding up the whole bridge. Now, these are in tension because they're holding up the bridge, and then we have this long cable up here that's actually anchored down on that end, anchored, on, anchored down on that end, so that it holds the whole bridge in place. The third type of force we're going to look at is bending. So when the structure begins to bend, we consider this to actually be two forces acting on the object. We consider it to be complementary, aka bending forces, when there are two kinds of internal forces acting on a structure at the same time. If you look at this bench, if I sit on this bench, it doesn't bend totally, it bends a little bit. On the top, there is compression. It is squeezing together on the top because as I sit, I'm adding pressure to the top. At the same time, on the bottom, the bottom is beginning to sag down and there's tension. The wood or the material the bench is made out of is beginning to pull apart. So both compression and tension act together to form bending or complementary forces. 
Shear force is a force that acts to push parts that are in contact with each other in opposite directions. And in torsion, this is a force that acts to twist materials or structures in one direction at the top and the opposite direction at the bottom. So quickly, there are five types of internal forces that we looked at. Compression, tension, bending or complementary forces, torsion, and shear. You need to be able to explain each one completely and fully and possibly give an example of each. Okay, so that's today's video cast. Uh, I hope you're following along because there's lots of info there. Uh, make sure you review that one lots of times because that one's important. Talk to you later.